One of the most brutal military campaigns in history, bar none, is definitely the Battle of Stalingrad, known as one of the bloodiest engagements in modern warfare, and that's saying a lot. Welcome to History Simplified, where we cover historical events in the most simple, understandable, and complete way. And today's topic is none other than the Battle of Stalingrad. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and to turn notifications on for more videos like today. Without further ado, let's begin. So what was the background of Stalingrad? What motivated it? And when did it take place? Let's begin with that. The Battle of Stalingrad was a military campaign between the Russian forces and those of Nazi Germany and the Axis powers during World War II. The Battle of Stalingrad is infamous, being one of the largest, bloodiest, and longest engagements in modern warfare, going from August 1942 through February 1943. Roughly two million troops fought in close quarters during this war, causing the deaths of around two million people during the fighting. Among the fallen were many Russian civilians who had no part in the conflict, with the body count easily reaching the tens of thousands. Stalingrad is, on top of that, one of Russia's important industrial cities, and through the sacrifice were heavy on both sides, it turned the tide of World War II in favor of the Allied forces. After having captured territory in present-day Ukraine and Belarus during spring of 1942, Germany's Wehrmacht forces mounted an offensive on southern Russia in the summer of that year. They were headed by the notoriously ruthless Joseph Stalin, having successfully rebuffed a German attack on the western part of the country, which had the ultimate goal of taking Moscow during the winter of 1941 and 1942. Stalin's Red Army had also suffered many losses during the fighting, both in terms of weaponry and manpower. Stalin and his generals, among those Soviet Union leader Nikita Khrushchev, expected another Nazi attack to be directed at Moscow. Hitler and the Wehrmacht had other ideas, though, decided to mount an offensive on southern Russia in the summer of that year. Remember that the Wehrmacht were the main unified armed forces of Nazi Germany from 1935 to 1945, consisting of the Heer, which was the army, the Kriegsmarine, which was the navy, and the Luftwaffe, which was the air force. The Wehrmacht was planning to invade Stalingrad, because the city served as an industrial center in Russia. Among other important goods, they produced artillery for the country's troops. The Volga River, which runs through the city, was also an important shipping route that connected both the western part of the country and the eastern region of it. Hitler wanted to occupy Stalingrad due to these purposes. It was a great place for propaganda as it bore Stalin's name, Stalingrad. It was crucial that the Nazis seize control of it and place the Nazi flag proudly on top of the city. However, that also meant the Russians wouldn't go down easily defending one of the main capitals. Hitler proclaimed that upon seizing control of Stalingrad, all of the city's male residents would be murdered in cold blood and its women deported, setting the stage for a bloody and hard-fought battle. Stalin ordered Russians strong enough to hold a rifle to take up arms in defense of the city. The 6th Army of the Wehrmacht began the assault on August 23, 1942. The Russian force were able at the start to slow down the Wehrmacht's advances. They employed a series of brutal skirmishes as a strategy to whittle down Stalingrad's forces and they were able to kill roughly 200,000 men in them. However, Stalingrad managed to hold off German soldiers despite the massive loss of life. The Russians already knew how Hitler thought, so, understanding his plans, they shipped much of their food out of Stalingrad, riding themselves on much of the grain and cattle before the siege. However, the city's residents were not evacuated intentionally. Stalin and his commanders thought that their presence would inspire the troops to give their best, so the 400,000 plus residents were left inside the city. Germany wouldn't stop their onslaught, however. Hitler wanted control of Stalingrad, and he would be getting it no matter what. Just a few days after launching their initial attack, Germany deployed the Luftwaffe Air Force, which rendered the Volga River impassable to shipping and had also sunk several Russian trade vessels in the process. All part of their plan, of course. From late August through to the end of their assault, the Luftwaffe kept conducting airstrikes on the city. So maybe it wasn't a good idea to leave all the civilians inside of the city, even if their presence would inspire the troops or not. What do you think of that? It's believed that tens of thousands of civilians were killed. More were captured and also forced into slave labor in the German camps. By September, the Luftwaffe had taken control of the skies over Stalingrad. The Russians were getting desperate, and the city workers not involved in war-related weapons production were soon asked to take up fighting, often without having firearms of their own. Just like in an impromptu war scene in an action movie, even the civilians had to help during these terrifying, bloody carnage. The women were enlisted to dig trenches at the front lines too. Even with the extra help from the civilians, the Russians kept suffering heavy losses, and by the fall of 1942, Stalingrad was in ruins. So, what was Stalin going to do about that? Things were looking very grim by this point. With even the civilians being murdered in cold blood in front of the military, 
which were also not spared from German strength. Even with the heavy casualties on their end, Stalin had commanded his forces to not retreat, decreeing the order number 227, not a step back. Those who surrendered would be subjected to a trial by military tribunal and have the possibility of facing execution. So it was die in battle or die after the battle for the Russians. Stalingrad had fewer than 20,000 troops in the city, no less than 100 tanks, yet they had to somehow overcome both the Luftwaffe and the ground troops. Stalin's generals sent reinforcements into the city and its surrounding areas, and thus the battle resumed once more. Fighting raged all around the streets of Stalingrad, with both on their sides employing snipers that were carefully placed on the roofs of the city's buildings. Russian generals George Zhukov and Alexander Valetsky organized Russian troops in the mountains to the north and west of the city. That's when they initiated Operation Uranus, the counterattack against Germans' forces. Operation Uranus was launched in two main spearheads, with some 50 miles north and south of the German salient, whose tip was at Stalingrad. The operation was known as a deep penetration maneuver, attacking not the main German force at the forefront of the battle for Stalingrad, composed by the 250,000 remaining men of the 4th Panzer Army and the 6th Army, but instead attacking the weaker flanks. These flanks had been vulnerably exposed due to the geographic location of the battle. The city had open steeps surrounding it, and those flanks were defended by undermotivated, undermanned, and worst of all, undersupplied troops from Italy, Hungary, and Romania. The soldiers that participated in Uranus penetrated deep into the planks, and by November 23rd, the two prongs of the attack had linked up in Kalak, roughly 60 miles west of Stalingrad. On top of that, Hitler's stubbornness and his military orders could match Stalin's own. He didn't want the forces to retreat from the Volga River, ordering Paulus, his general, to stand and fight. Considering that winter was setting in, and we're talking about Northern Europe here, with freezing cold and their food and medical supplies dwindling, their forces grew weaker. Hitler had commanded the Luftwaffe to supply the 6th Army, but their air convoys could only deliver a fraction of the necessary supplies. Hitler had to order Field Marshal Erich von Meinstein, one of the most talented German commanders, to rescue Paulus's forces by fighting its way eastward in a counter-operation known as Operation Winter Tempest. However, Hitler had stupidly refused to let Paulus fight his way westward to link up faster with Manstein. This decision was what caused Paulus's forces to lose the fight, because Manstein's forces lacked the reserves to break through the Soviet encirclement on their own. They then began Operation Saturn, a nod to their Operation Uranus on December 16. They wanted to shrink the numbers of encircled Germans and setting the stage for the final showdown on Stalingrad. The Soviet forces had been supplied with equipment and food and carefully located over the ice in the Volga River, which due to winter had now frozen over solid. Thanks to their previous strategy, the Russians formed a defensive ring around the city and trapped the 300,000 German and Axis troops in the 6th Army. The Russians were able to capitalize on the harsh winter that followed November and December, and this is Russia we're talking about. The Russians were already used to it, but the Germans were not used to fighting in these conditions, choking them off from vital supplies and surrounding them even more. It took them until February 1943, but the Russian troops were able to retake Stalingrad and capture around 100,000 German soldiers. Though, even in March, a few pockets of resistance continued to fight in the city. The captured soldiers died on the Russian prison camps due to disease or starvation. What began as a certain win on Hitler's end turned out to be a massive loss. The first failure of the war to be publicly acknowledged by Hitler. Hitler and the Axis powers were put on the defensive, and even Hitler himself had to publicly acknowledge his loss in the battle. Russian confidence was massively boosted, and most historians and experts believe that the Battle of Stalingrad was a major turning point in World War II's conflict. It was the beginning of the victory march for the Allied forces. So, what are your thoughts on the incredible Battle of Stalingrad? While everyone thought Germany would win and seize control of Stalingrad, Stalin's stern strategies and Hitler's military blunders were what allowed the Russians to win the fight in the end. Though it was notoriously difficult and took them several months, the Russians were the undisputed winners of the Battle of Stalingrad, and in February 2018, the residents of what's today the city of Volgograd gathered in it to celebrate the 75th anniversary of the battle that, for quite a few months, caused many deaths and turmoil in their city. Let us know your thoughts on the analysis in the comments, and also make sure to leave us a like, share this video with your friends, and also subscribe to History Simplified for more videos like today. We hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time for more.